Aloha, I'm Lila Berg, and we're here at Washington Place, ready to meet our governors and first ladies, the people who influence, inspire, and continue to impact our daily lives. Thank you for joining us on Island Focus. So where are we here at Washington Place? This is the first room that many guests will enter and come to when they visit Washington Place. This is the John and Mary Dominus room mm -hmm. in honor of John and Mary Dominus. They, along with their son, John Owen Dominus, moved from Boston to Hawaii to begin their lives here. And as we know, John Owen Dominus, their son, became the husband of Queen Liliuokalani. That's right, that's right. So the furniture here is from that time period. Yes, the furniture is from that time period and reflects the time that Mary lived in the home. And here we have just a special piece that's very meaningful to me. It is a umeke ball that was presented to Queen Liliokalani when she first became queen. And this was given to her by the people of Hawaii. How special to have it here, and along with the with the china and silverware. Yes, and uh, this was all reflective of that time period where they did entertain in this manner. And Mary Dominus did enjoy entertaining visitors and travelers from around the world into this home. As we move to other rooms in the house, I'm, I'm sure you think about not only the history, but what it represents in the present. All the history means so much to the people of Hawaii. So we continue to work hard to preserve what we have here to share and to educate. Look at this fabulous piece of instrument here. This is the Queen's piano. It's a koa piano. It was gifted to her on her 53rd birthday. And she played on the piano and based on research also composed on the piano. And as we know, we have some of her favorite songs, Aloha Oi being the internationally well-known song that she composed. I love the fact that we're in a, a historic house with a kahili as yes. well. <laughs> and this is part of her collection that we have two here that are part of her her collection, so it's quite quite a time period piece. And you know, it's so comforting to know that the queen was here, even when we have furniture that we might be unfamiliar with. Yes, this is a koa bench that was from her time period. It was made in honor of her love for music. So you'll notice the back of the bench is in the shape of a treble clef, I believe. So it has that musical feel to it. I'm sure when you step in this room, when you first enter the house, you can almost hear the music and feel her spirit, can't you? We can, and it is just a special room for us because the Queen's presence is always here in the entire home. And this is so exciting because it is a place where we know how much she loved music, how talented she was, a prolific composer, and this room reflects some of that. And is this lay always there? This chair is, based on research again, one of the Queen's favorite chairs. It was brought to Washington Place from Queen Emma's Summer Palace by Mrs. Ariyoshi. And we put lays as tradition on the chair in honor of the Queen. So whenever I have a special event that's very meaningful to me, that where I receive a lay, I'll always present that lay to the Queen. Oh, how wonderful. So I can feel like she's a part of what we're doing and that you're a very important part of this place. Thank you for sharing this. You're welcome. We have a very special opportunity today to meet Governor and Mrs. Ige. Thank you for joining us. What a pleasure to see you again and to be in this beautiful home. Welcome to Washington Place. Thank We're happy you. to have you here. <laughs> Would you share some special memories that you might have with this place and, and also the history? The very first open house that we had here for a Christmas celebration was really something that I will always remember. Obviously, the first time is always 
um, intimidate, <laughs> uh, you know, Washington Place, um, inviting the public to be part of that. I was surprised at how many people were, came through and said that they've lived in Hawaii for 10, 20, 50 years and they've never been in Washington Place. And that really, you know, told us how special this place is. And, you know, really made us committed to uh, opening the home so that there would be more opportunities for people to visit. We, we don't think someone should be a resident here for 40 or 50 years and never been to Washington Place. And certainly we've been trying to have more opportunities for the public to be here. It was so gracious and generous of you, especially for some of us who've grown up, grown up here and, have, and watched Washington Place from the outside, and, and a special memory for you. You know, I think it's always the visitors from our community that is the most heartwarming to me. And we have children, school children, come and visit the home. And they see the home in a very different way. They'll look at the queen's portrait in the dining room, and they love the butterfly pin that she has. And I had a number of thank you notes on the butterfly pin. <laughs> so it's just those perspectives, I think, that makes it so special. You know, we do have international guests that come to share the home here at Washington Place. And one one particular memory is with the Prince and Princess Akashino of Japan. And we hosted a dinner here for them out on the lanai with about a hundred guests. And as I chatted with the prince, we talked about some of the history. And one aspect of the history is his grandfather, Emperor Hirohito, gifted the home with the allspice tree that's planted on the property. So just before dessert, he wanted to see the allspice tree. It's still living. <laughs> it's still living. And you know, it's getting dark. I said, it's getting dark. We have to go and see it right now if you want to see it. So just in the middle of our fabulous meal, he got up and said, let's go and see the allspice oh, tree. So his entourage and I <laughs> went through the gardens and uh, we gave him a tour of the gardens in the middle of dinner now. <laughs> showed him the spice, allspice tree that his grandfather had um, planted. He wanted to honor his grandfather in looking at the tree, visiting with the tree that his grandfather had planted during uh, the Governor Ariyoshi's time. You know, and it certainly connects us to the past. You know, when he first mentioned he wanted to go see the tree, I almost had a heart attack, <laughs> right? I mean, can you imagine, is there a tree here? Is it, where is it? Do we know? I mean, she knew, right? Don knew, but I was like going through everything in my, in my head about, I hope the tree's alive. and. Um, you know, it was it remarkable very that it's alive, doing very it's well. It is doing very well. But it just reminds you about how this place is connected to the past and the many, many special guests who have been entertained here and really our moment in time for us to be residents here and hopefully uh, expand on the legacy. Well, and you've touched a little bit upon the significance and the relevance of Washington Place, and maybe you could. Tell me a little bit more about that, because what you've said about the international connection and the local connection, we are going into the future. Yes. And there is significance. Yes. It was the home that John and Mary Dominus first built when they came to Hawaii in 1822. And then the home became their son, John Owen Dominus, married Queen Kalani. It became her home after that, and of course, her life was very rich and historical here, and we have so many memories of that that is so important to our history that we must remember, we must capture, and many of it happened here in this home. Thereafter, the territorial governors lived here, as well as the state governors. So all those lives and all those events all happened in this home, making this home, I think, so significant for the people of Hawaii to just come, learn, and visit the home. And, and feel connected. Yes. Not only with the home and the past, but also the current government yes. as you're in. What is your hope for this place as a symbol of Hawaii? Certainly, I, I really hope that it continues to be such a vibrant part of the governor's office and the governor's residence. Truly, you know, when I have the opportunity to speak with Governor Ariyoshi or Governor Waihei, and they tell the stories of what important decisions were made in the breakfast nook and, you know, having convenings of different uh, leaders in our community to talk about tough issues. It just reminds us about our, our space in time, but I think most importantly, 
that this home is so important to the leadership of Hawaii and really being an opportunity to break bread. And, you know, a lot of the most difficult decisions are not made in formal settings. <laughs> it really is about sharing a meal and having a conversation that helps us have these breakthroughs. And it must be very refreshing for you because not living in the house and you're in the residence behind, sometimes to wander through the gardens and to be in a place where you know it's safe and quiet. You know, I think when I first moved here, one of the first things I did in the evening was to stroll the gardens and just to take in the whole atmosphere and the spirit of the place. And there's no feeling like that anywhere else, I have to say. It is a feeling of calm. It is a feeling of reassurance. It is a feeling of family that really makes you feel safe in this home. Despite all the history, despite all the interactions, there's a sense of calm, I feel, in this home that just inspires you to carry on and to do more than you, you expect. And just the secret, you know, Don will, from time to time, in the middle of the evening, just say, you know what, I need to walk the grounds and she'll come out for a walk. And so people might see her <laughs> walking the grounds during tough times because she, it does calm her down. You know, it gives her a sense, you know, she feels the history of the place uh, and it does help to calm and, and you know, clear minds and, and think about things that would better move the state of Hawaii forward. Well, and I clearly get the feeling that it's an honor for both of oh, you yes. to be in this place as we are honored to have you share the stories and also your time with us today. Your accomplishments in office speak for that honor that you give. Um, one parting thought as we end our conversation today. Thank you for this opportunity um, for us to share the home. You know, for many years in, since we moved here, we were refurbishing and fixing up. And really, Don has done a terrific job of, of repairing the home and really preparing it so we can share it with more people. It's always something that we were committed to do. And, uh, and now this opportunity to share and looking forward to many more. You know, I would like to invite the public to come and visit. Um, during this holiday season on December 20th. We do have our open house that is open to the public at no cost. And see this yes, fabulous and, tree. And <laughs> see that, that a number of uh, people came together to put the tree together. It's with Bloomingdale's, it's with the children of the Lily Okalani Trust. It's the people who brought the tree over uh, to have it installed here. It is part of the, a community effort. And really this home is a a home for the community and for the people of Hawaii. Well, thank you so much for inviting us into your home for this brief view. Uh, and we'll look forward to hearing a little bit more on our walk and talk. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank, thank you. you. What a pleasure we've had meeting Governor and Mrs. Ige today at Washington Place. Mahalo for joining us. What an extraordinary opportunity you have today as you tune into Island Focus to meet Governor and Mrs. George Ariyoshi. Aloha for being with us. Being back here after spending 12 years here as your residence must also bring back memories. Brings back many, many memories, wonderful memories. It was a golden part of my family's you know, lives. When governor was elected and you moved in, the house did not look like this. Oh, no. <laughs> well, uh, the major part of it, the construction. But, you know, we made the upstairs very livable for the family. And downstairs was for the public. But upstairs was private. So it was a nice balance that we had to do. But it all worked out very well because it was such a privilege and an honor to live in Queen Lily Okalani's home. I remember when I woke up the first morning, I had to really pinch myself and say, <laughs> is this for real? <laughs> and then I heard the birds twitter, and then the 
then I could hear the sirens at, from Queen's Hospital. So I said, it is real. It is. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your most special memories, Governor? I used to tell people that Hawaii is the only state that has a royal pass. And the opportunity to live here in this home, you know, demonstrated to me what it meant. I saw the picture of the queen and looked at her, she was looking at me. <laughs> and I moved away and she followed me. And I told her, uh -huh. hey, she's really watching me. So not only do I have to be good as a governor, <laughs> but to be sure that I take really good care of this house because this house belongs to her. And you have special memories in the kitchen or the little breakfast nook as well as the dining room. Your connection with the legislature is historic. Yes, uh, this place uh, made it possible for me to have many meetings with the legislators. And every week and a half, two weeks, I would call, get together, with, have breakfast with a group of legislators. And I leave it up to the president and the speaker to decide who comes. But we had an opportunity to talk about Hawaii, and that to me is so important. It's not a one-way street. The Dutch officials need to know what the governor is thinking, what its policies are. We need, I need to know what the legislators were thinking also. So that opportunity made it possible for us to talk and for us to try to implement the things that we felt very strong about. And then the small dining room there, in the morning, I would have very private meetings with people that I wanted to talk to, to get them information from. And so this room, this house, was a place where I was able to talk to people, get information from people. And so I feel very strongly about this house. I can understand that. And while Governor is doing his professional business, you have the responsibility and the privilege, <laughs> as you have shared, of having the public be part of this. Yes. Well. You know, at that time when we were living here, there were no jets. So we had prime ministers, premiers, and kings and queens visiting Hawaii. And so we're so fortunate that we had that opportunity to entertain these wonderful people. I mean, it was such a privilege to do that. Although I did have, I remember the protocol officer coming. We had just moved into Washington Place. And uh, a few months later, he said, oh, Mrs. Ariyoshi, your first guest will be the Queen of England. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> I mean, I, mean it, I was just floored. And, and I was renovating the house, and I was redecorating the house. And that took about two years. But it wasn't quite ready, so I, did, I, did, I just did my best. But I remember when I used to go to the uh, governor's conferences, I used to so proudly say that, I was the only first lady who could say that I live in a home that once belonged to a queen. And so we, we were able to entertain these wonderful people and meet them. And the kids, you know, joined us in all these dinners. Although I had those guests, my first guests were really, we moved in the early part of December. What I wanted to do was have a Christmas party here. And so I asked the Catholic services to help me and for the most underprivileged children of the state. So I had my Christmas parties. I did it for 12 years, every Christmas. And it was such a joyous, joyous feeling. And they came and they were so in awe. We had these huge gingerbread houses, you know. And also E.K. Fernandes, Connie, had donated some rides, so we had these rides. So during the holidays, it was such a wonderful time to start off Christmas with these underprivileged children that were just beautiful, beautiful people. And for you, Governor, the significance of this place was in addition to being a home for your family, it was a home for the state. Being part of the family, family was very important, but it was to my children also. And the first day we were here, my youngest son, Don, I saw him sliding down the railway. <laughs> And I looked at him, I said, Don, that's your first and your last slide. <laughs> but they loved the place and they respected it. The other thing we told them also was that the bed down here is a queen's bed. And nobody sits, nobody lies down on that bed. And they really respected that, they respected that bed that belonged to the queen. So in many ways, my whole family, every one of them, understood the significance of this place what it meant to Jean and me, 
and how we have to treat it and deal with it so we can enjoy it, but have people enjoy it. Now, she talked about the underprivileged ch uh, children. But really, what I was very touched by, every day, Jeannie would have all the young kids, school children coming to Washington Place, enjoying themselves, finding out about Hawaii, about the Royal Pass, and then Jeannie would play the piano. Oh, well. And they would, the oh, piano out there, the Queen's <laughs> piano, and all the children would come, they would sing, and they would sit and they would start playing the piano. Beautiful. So it was a very, very warm, cordial feeling that I, Jeannie provided for us here. Well, I felt that the home should really, really belong to the people. And these halls and rooms were filled with children, senior citizens, because after I started the docent program for Washington Place, and uh, I sent letters to all the schools, invited them to uh, come and see Washington Place. And so these rooms were filled with people. The, the house was alive, you know, and we had our privacy upstairs. Everything worked out well with my family. But downstairs was public. And so with all of the eliminary institutions, the charity groups, they used the patio and it was free. And I mean, every week we had day and evenings were filled with people and music. And your book uh, that you wrote about the special memories of the First Lady yes. um, even gives us more insight on how wonderful the years were for you here. Could you share the significance of your lays and how you were received, especially as the first Japanese governor? Well, of course, you know, I'm always happy to receive a lay because these flowers were the queen's favorite flowers. In fact, we planted these more plants and the gardens here were filled with uh, her favorite flowers. And, and you were given a distinction and a Hawaiian bracelet. Well, well, when we left Washington Place, the daughters and sons of Hawaiian warriors came with music, a chant, and they gave me a Hawaiian name, which was Kale Nani Oka Aina, and it meant the beautiful lady of the land. And it's legal, that's my Hawaiian name. And they also gave me their lei here because every morning on Queen Lily Okwalani's birthday on September 2nd, I would start early in the morning at seven and sing Aloha Oi with, in front of the tablet here with them and then go to Mauna Ala for the, uh, for the ceremony there for her birthday. And then in the evening I invited, I had a reception here. It, it was called the Queen Serenade and it was the old songs of the queen we brought back. Because now, of course, there's a published book of her songs, but at that time, nobody heard her songs. So we did that during the queen's birthday, and I'm sure the queen was happy. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, George talks about the portrait. It's that portrait was from ceiling to floor. It was done by William Cogswell, and uh, this now is a replica, but when she was there, I felt like she was taking care of my family. Given your feelings and warmth and love for this house and the significance of this house, what is the hope that you have for the future of Washington Place? Well, you know, because we had these rooms filled with people of Hawaii, and this house really belongs to them, I, I really would hope that it would be once again be bright and merry and um, have groups uh, meeting here. I think the Queen would like uh, something like that where Hawaiians can come and get together and to have that togetherness that we need so badly. And I, I think for educational purposes, this house could be used for things like that. To play the role of being a pu'uhonua, a safe place. Yes. Governor, your thoughts on the hope for hope? Well, it's under the foundation now. But, you know, foundations don't have monies to re-operate and to make it work well. At some point, I believe that the state is going to have to take back the property and be able to make it what it was, open to public, open to everybody, and so that we can really understand that this house belongs to Hawaii. Not only it belongs to Hawaii, but that it is a feeling and the culture of Hawaii that this house represents 
that has to be understood by all of our white people. Well, and the fact that you're here today, and as we close our conversation, um, gives us that message that you are still taking care of Hawaii. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, may we wish everybody a Merry Christmas <laughs> and a Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year. from the right. Ariyoshi yes. Ohana. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for, you for having us. We just had the pleasure of meeting Governor and Mrs. George Ariyoshi. Appreciate you being with us as well. So this is a significant room as well. Yes, it is. This is what we call the blue room because largely of the blue decor. But the decor here is, it has an Asian um, tone to it. And this piece is one of the signature pieces in the room. It's the oldest piece in the house. And it was brought here by John Dominus on one of his buying trips out in Asia. And this room is where we greet dignitaries, royalty when they come to the home. The dignitaries would sit on this bench and we will sit on the individual chairs there and we'll have a short conversation before going into the dining room or going into the reception area. You know, the dignitaries really want to honor the queen when mm. they come here. So we uh, move the chair that way so their back is not facing the queen. And oh, interesting. Uh, something that uh, it's been tradition to do that. So when dinner is served yes. or dinner is called, they'll come, leave this room and, and we'll walk into this room. This is what we call the queen's dining room. However, the room was built after the queen lived here. It was built by the territorial governors. And this is where the governors will hold their official state dinners. And we've had several here. You know, and, and when I look at this table, um, first of all, how large it is, but yes. you've also set it in a way for us to understand the time period. Yes. So the way the room is set, this is for a state dinner, of course, so we have the state china. But when visitors come here for the holidays, they get to look at it in a different way. We have the state china, territorial china, as well as what I call the ali'i china. So the ali'i china is what King David Kalakaua and Queen Liliuokalani would have used in their state dinners. It's amazing to think that our kings and queens were so internationally comfortable. Yes, they were, and they had relationships throughout the world that we don't really think about. So the silverware under the glass case is a gift from King Napoleon III to King Kamehameha IV. So they had relationships that were friendly, that were developing, and they've, I think, really learned from each other on how to move forward. I wonder what language they spoke, you know? I know our kings and queens were very versatile yes. and very educated, but I don't know how they were from Europe. <laughs> and that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I would love to have heard some of those conversations. And, you know, I think, though, our Ali were very worldly and very global in their thinking. And in my research, it is just amazing to see that they saw the world as a place to learn and explore from. And offered Hawaii as a location for people to come yes. and learn from us as well. And, That's right. and having the first date dinner with a menu that you even have saved, Yes, having the first date dinner at Iolani Palace must yes. have been amazing. So the queen did not have the dining room, so she would have her state dinners at Iolani Palace. And from based on our research, they were quite grand and quite interesting. So we have on display here a menu from her first state dinner. And it has some pretty interesting items. I think <laughs> one of the interesting items I saw was celery mayonnaise chicken. Who knew? Who knew? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. You're welcome. We have such a special opportunity today on Island Focus to enjoy meeting Governor and Mrs. John Waihe'e. Mahalo. How special for you to be here again. Yes. And for us to have you with us. Please share with us some of your most particular memories that you have, especially living in this house. 
Yeah. This is home. So whenever we come into it, you know, there's a lot of memories. Obviously, there's a lot of important things that happen here. But it's also a lot of family things that happen here. So it's warm. It's heartwarming to come into, uh, come back home. So what do you think your children would say if we asked them about their memories? Oh, they have tons of memories. Um, <laughs> I know when my son John, when he, we first moved in here, I, he had a friend stay overnight. And then they, he said, oh, let's go to the tennis court. So they went over there and, of course, they couldn't get in because it was locked. It's right back there. Started to climb the fence or something. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all these security came and, you know. So I think that's probably the first lesson he learned is that, in a way, you know, there's some privacy. There's protocol. Yeah, yeah also. right, right. Yeah. And, you know, as open as this house is for the public, um, growing up here, it was one of those places that we just looked at from the outside. The feeling inside, you you really contribute to creating that place. Well, yeah, and one of the good things about living here, when we lived here, it was pre-9-11. So the security was not as intense yeah. as, uh, it, it is, as it evolved into. So there's a little bit more openness about it. In fact, uh, even prior to ourselves, like uh, I've heard stories that when Governor Burns and Governor Quinn's family lives here, the gates were actually open and people could just kind of like walk in. Right. Right. It wasn't that open uh, when we got here, but it, it, but it was a house, it was a home, you know? There were a lot of important things that happened here. I mean, they, Can you share a little bit, whether yeah. they're your accomplishments or? Well, Governor Ryoshi had uh, Emperor Hirohito here. We had Emperor Akahito. So they were important people, but there were also fun moments, you know, right here in the Lanai. One of my fondest memory was we had the um, sumo, sumutori from Japan visiting us. And that was a really interesting thing because when they walked in the house to get to the patio, patio, you could hear the thumping, tum, 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 tum. Everything kind of rumbled. Right? Rumble, <laughs> and they would stand on the side and then when the, when the uh, uh, MC says, okay, you can eat, they would just go Shuck! to the table yeah. and just dash there. Yeah. So it, it was also fun. And the climax of the, of the evening was when <laughs> the Yokozuna, who is the top ranked uh, sumutori, uh, Chiona decided, Fuji. Uh, Chiona Fuji, Chiona Fuji decided to take Lin and throw her in the air. Oh my and God, no, <laughs> wait, wait. There's another side to the story. <laughs> my husband tells him, why don't you, uh, maybe, I think Governor Ariyoshi um, was the one who suggested that Chiona Fuji pick me up, take a picture, because in those days they had these cards, phone cards that they sold. Do you remember that time? Yes, yes. So he didn't know what to do, right? Because maybe protocol-wise, it's not such a good thing to right. be. <laughs> the governor's for, wife. Yeah, right. But the and bottom he was line there. is he tossed he, you he in the air. Wow, well, because you went. <laughs> you know, you have at it. Well, so. she blames me But for I was it. happy for it. <laughs> and but, metaphorically, yeah. you know, as the first Hawaiian governor here in Hawaii, yeah, it, you this, were tossed in the air. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's the other side of this house, yeah. uh, this home, because this was our queen's home. Yeah. And so you couldn't live here without feeling her, uh, without feeling her presence, you know? Yeah. And especially when we first moved in here in the dining room, there was a huge portrait of the queen. And the most significant thing about that portrait was that her eyes would follow you when you walked in the room. The portrait now is located at Iolani Palace, where it was originally supposed to be, but I kept it as long as we could get away with it. And eventually, we made a, like a duplicate that's now in the room. But what I remember uh, for myself was that there were moments when I was in office when things were tense, you know, when there was important decisions to me. And I would literally come downstairs, sit in the dining room, and look at her and have her look back at me and try to get a sense of her spirit, you know? And what I saw, and I, I tell anybody who's interested, go to the palace or even come here and look at the queen's eyes. And what it does is that it, it overwhelms you with compassion. So from a personal perspective, what were the holidays like here? And is there something that you remember specifically that happened? 
Well, you know, at Christmas, the house was just in its finest. But one year, John's cousin bought us this gift and none of us knew about it. And the two children, John and myself, went through the front door and usually the lights were already off by then. But there was a carriage waiting for us. We climbed in it and we the went through The horse-drawn carriage. Yes, the horse-drawn carriage. We rode through downtown Honolulu to experience the beautiful lighting at Christmas time. And it was raining and they gave us blankets because actually it felt cold. And it was really like we were experiencing a snowy Christmas in Hawaii. And it was almost like a movie, except it was real for you, <laughs> yeah. right? You leave Washington Place and tour Honolulu. Right. Uh, and then come back to your home. Yeah. Um, how very special. Thank yeah, you for sharing that. Thank you. In closing our conversation for today, when you think about the significance and the relevance of Washington Place in the future, what is your hope for it and for the people? I think for my part, um, we've always treated this as the home of Hawaii's last queen. So whenever, and we had a lot of children come through and they would have these personalized tour of Washington Place and all the stories that we had because we wanted it to be real. We wanted them to feel they'd actually been in the presence of the queen. So as we went from room to room, you know, this was the queen's piano, but we'd actually allow them, somebody from the class or whatever, to sit and play the piano. So it was a real thing, authentic, you know. I hope that people, um, can as they learn more and more about the queen and what she meant in our history and the legacy that she leaves behind. I hope that they can continue to have that knowledge and understanding of what I, a I special hope, queen we I had. hope Washington Place gets to be alive. You know, yeah. it, during the Christmas season, the holiday season, yeah. uh, this place was full of lights. Yeah. Lights, yeah. laughter, people, yeah. uh, children. Gingerbread like houses. Yeah. Huh? Remember gingerbread houses. Oh. Gingerbread houses. Oh, it, it was an it was a exciting yeah. time, and it was a chance to visit. Mm -hmm. But that was the way it was when the queen was here too. Alive. She, it was alive. Of, it yeah. was full of people. She would have borders. She would have people coming over, and so remembering. Uh, I hope that this place doesn't just turn into a museum. It's a place where the queen spirit actually lives. Well, and what you speak so much about, which I think is resemblant of your terms in office, was Aloha Spirit. Yeah. And, and bringing people together of all nationalities. It, which is what, what Lily Okalani symbolized, you know. We remember our fondest memories are like uh, these personal in, uh, times which I'm describing. But actually, a lot of really important work went on here. You know, I, I, a lot of crises were settled right in this room. And in the breakfast nook, I understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, yeah, regularly. And then you also got a spirit of the former governors. You know, we were fortunate when we moved in here that uh, Jeannie Ariyoshi had spent so much time, effort, in, in really restoring the... Um, the historical parts of the and the Kona of the places, right? Well. We fixed the upstairs, <laughs> um, but she was really responsible for bringing the house, the historic parts of the house, together. Yeah. Well, I'd like to suggest in closing that you added your spirit and your aloha and your love and respect for our queen. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time of this holiday season. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, thank you thank for you. having us. And thank you too for tuning in to Island Focus today. You just had the opportunity of meeting Governor and Mrs. John Waihei. Aloha. So we're on the second floor now, yes. and the rooms that we're in and we see behind us were officially the residences where former governors lived. Yes, these were the private residences. In fact, they were bedrooms of probably the children of the governors. Mm -hmm. And from time to time, the governors will come upstairs and reminisce about who lived in each room. And what you've done, however, is changed it into a historic place. Yes, it was decided that we want to open and share this home to the public, every part of this home. And people are so excited to be upstairs at Washington Place. Well, it's kind of like eavesdropping on a private life. Yes, it <laughs> is. 
And so one of the things that we did was to create a photo montage of every state governor who served during their time here and to share their pictures, their stories through the pictures of their lives here. And I understand that the process that you used was quite generous. Yes. <laughs> Everyone got to choose their own. People got to choose, families got to choose their own photos. And it was a long process, but it was an interesting process because they would come to Washington Place, look at the photos, not pick some, pick some. They would share their own photos as well that they wanted to present to the public. So it was a very meaningful process because I believe they went through their times as governor, first lady, first family here at Washington Place through these photos. And I'm sure stepping into this house again where many of them called home yes. uh, for so many years was almost bringing closure for their own experience. Yes, I think it was. But I don't know if it'll ever be a closure. Yeah, that's true. You know, being <laughs> governor, you are always will be seen as governor for the state of Hawaii. This just continues their legacy, continues their stories. You know, they all share wonderful stories with, uh, with me about their times here. And those are really precious moments I have with each of the past governors. It means so much to me. So the families come in and they share their photographs and um, give you the stories of their experiences, but how would we know what those stories are? You know, that was one of the challenges we faced because as you can see, our wall space is very limited for captions and mm -hmm. words. So we brought that challenge to students at the West Oahu University of Hawaii Creative Media Program, and they came up with an application, an augmented reality application augmented reality. Yes. So we wanted all to also bring a bit of tech to Washington Place. And what that program allows you to do is you get an instrument, one of our, our laptop um, computers, you hover over the photo. When you hover over the photo, it'll pop up more stories about that particular photo. Wow, I'm just gonna have to come back and experiment with yes. that. Yes, and we encourage everyone to come and visit and try out our augmented reality. Travels. Thank you. You're welcome. We're here at Washington Place today, and you have an opportunity to meet Governor and Mrs. Ben Cayetano. Appreciate you being with us. You lived in this beautiful place. You were the last first family here. What memories can you share with us? Well, I think this place was a, a memorable experience because there's a lot of history to, to this uh, to Washington Place. And one of the things that uh, led us to really believed that uh, we needed to build a second residence was to preserve this place and to preserve its history. The legislature didn't give us a dime. They didn't want to give us any money for it. So Vicky decided to go out into the private sector and, uh, and raise uh, the funds to build a second residence. I think he raised about 1.2 or 4 million. Eh? Right, 1.4. 1.4 million. Yeah. It must have been a big decision to move residences because this is historically the place where governors live. When you look at the, the consequences of its age, then you know that something has to be done to make sure you preserve it. So that's why we, we felt it was important to build a, the new residence. And you got to give Vicky credit. You know, she went out and she raised 1.4 million. And what was really nice about it was that once the story, she told people the story, the contributions are coming in, yeah. And I would add that, you know, without our curator, Jim Bartels, I mean, he was really behind all of this. We could never have accomplished that. But having been that last family living here, I think really compelled us to want to share this history uh, with the people of Hawaii and for all generations to come. And also, I think it's a, a wonderful place to be in, to visit, but for future governors, uh, having lived here, 
we really felt that a more modern structure, also a more secure place, would be very useful. And I think uh, it's been a great privilege to be part of, you know, doing that. And your family, your children lived here. What would they say as a special memory? Because you must have created moments for them. I think that was interesting because we had, I remember one dinner, one state dinner for the king of Western Samoa, and it was in the dining room. And all of a sudden, the chandelier starts to move. And it was our son, William, who was playing soccer in his bedroom directly above the room. And everybody's like, what is this? And I had to say, excuse me. And I went upstairs, don't be playing. We have a dinner downstairs. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of interesting memories, the Easter egg hunts that we did for the children of Hawaii. And we had uh, holiday open houses as well. So beautiful to be here at any time, but especially during those special events. Well, and you invited a lot of organizations to have their award ceremonies here. Well, I think we, we realized that uh, we had to share this place with as many uh, of our people as possible. And so the Easter egg hunts were really a big hit with the kids. Open house on, on the holidays, huge lines of people coming in, seeing this place for the very first time. That was important, I thought. Mm -hmm. I think it's what Queen Lilio Kalani would have wanted. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So in addition to the memories you have of inviting the public to be part of this and opening up your home for other people to share, I know there was something personal that you experienced here. Well, I think for me, it would be our wedding day, <laughs> May 5th, 1997. Mm -hmm. And I remember because I'd gone to work like I usually do and didn't tell any of my coworkers. I said, oh, I got to leave a little earlier. <laughs> and they were going, what are you carrying that? That was my wedding gown. I oh, it's just some stuff. They thought it was laundry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just came here and uh, we got married in the afternoon. It was, that's very special. And it was a small private ceremony yes. in your home, actually. Right, right. How do you remember it, Governor? <laughs> well, I remember the reception, which was held at uh, the end of May, right? Yeah, right, three weeks later. And uh, it turned out there were we had about 3,000 people come. Oh, my. Yeah. There was, there was, <laughs> we said, oh, we got to invite friends first, and then, oh, this person campaigned for us. And there was no end, you know. That was a huge crowd. I remember Mark Takai coming up to me one day and said, hey, Gov, do you mind if we, we, he and his wife, get married here? I said, Mark, you know, uh, we don't usually do that. Or do you mind if we have the ceremony here, the, you know, the, the wedding ceremony? Yeah, okay, sure. So he had the wedding ceremony here. And had about two, three hundred people attend the wedding ceremony. <laughs> <laughs> that was very generous of you. <laughs> when you think about growing up in Hawaii, right, would you ever have believed you would live here? And <laughs> I never believed I would be governor. So, <laughs> <laughs> so when we look forward, uh, having lived here, you had a sense of history and what the queen might have wanted. Future governors are not going to live here. Uh, current governor doesn't. What is the significance for Hawaii and for this place, and what is your hope for Washington Place in the future? My hope, not only for Washington Place, but for the state and the future of the state, is that it's important for our young generation to understand and know the history of the state. I'm not just talking about from the days of uh, Captain Cook, you know, to the overthrow. I'm talking about the entire history and the history of the different ethnic groups that came here. Filipinos, Chinese, and Japanese to work on the plantations, you know, Howleys to have develop business here. And I think it's important to understand the need to really protect and preserve the, the Aina because uh, this place is a great target, I suppose for development. And I, I wouldn't like, I think we're over, overdeveloped right now, and I wouldn't like to see too much more. And from your perspective, 
Well, I think for Washington Place, we would love to see it as the current governor is doing, is to continue to open it to all the people of Hawaii, to share what this place means to our history, and to share the stories of the queen who lived here, as well as uh, the number of territorial governors uh, afterwards. Um, as our conversation wraps up, is there a parting thought that you might have regarding Washington Place or Hawaii or our youth? Well, I think for me, it's, I think, not, not only being here, but just in all our lives. I think living out the spirit of what Queen Lilio Kalani represented, which is peace on earth and goodwill to all people. I think that's very special, especially in this time. And the Aloha spirit. That's right. That you really, both of you, exuded when you were in office and, and helped us to remember. Your parting thought, Governor. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I think, it's, I think it's important that we maintain and preserve the Aloha spirit. Mm -hmm. And that won't happen if we allow historical places like this not to be known or exposed to our young people. Just coming into this building is, is itself an education of sorts. And uh, that's why this, build, this building is important. Knowing the history of our state and our peoples is vital. And, and what you say is really significant. And I'm sure as you walked in here again, it brought back memories of your contributions, not just personally in this house, but also professionally. So we want to thank you so much for the time <laughs> and your continued vigilance, you know, and helping us remember who we are. Thank you. Thank you. We've had the wonderful pleasure of meeting Governor and Mrs. Ben Cayetano. Thank you for joining us. Mahalo. Mahalo to Governor and Mrs. Ige and the staff here at Washington Place for hosting us today and to you for tuning in to Island Focus. I'm Lila Berg. Aloha and malama pono. Take care of each other. Happy holidays.